All right, this video is about celestial objects in our solar system. First thing we're going to talk about is the geocentric versus heliocentric model of the solar system. So if you can go outside and observe the sky from Earth, it appears like the sun, the moon, and the planets, and the stars all move across the sky while Earth is still. Okay, um, <clears throat> so you're standing outside, you're looking up in the sky, the sun out over time it looks like it moves across the sky and so do the stars and the moon and the planets and everything and how is it that they actually move across the sky okay um, for many centuries most people assumed that the Sun and the moon and the planets and the stars orbited or moved around our planet Earth because that's what people observed in the sky okay so <clears throat> this is the way they thought that Earth is in the middle of the solar system and that the moon and all the planets and the sun and the stars moved around us. That's what it looks like when you're standing there. Okay, this is called the geocentric model of the solar system. Geo means earth and centric means center. So with this model, people thought that earth was in the center of the solar system. Okay, then starting in the 1600s, scientists began to reject the geocentric model in favor of the heliocentric model. And that places the sun at the center of the solar system. So in the heliocentric model, the sun's in the center, and then all the planets, including Earth, orbit around the sun. Okay, what does heliocentric mean? Helio means sun, and centric means center. Now why did this change? How did they know that... that that the model of the solar system, the, the original one, was incorrect. Okay, The invention of the telescope is what changed the perception of the solar system from geocentric to heliocentric. Galileo, a scientist in Italy in the 1600s, observed with his telescope that he invented that there were moons orbiting the planet Jupiter. You can do this too if you use a a, a telescope and look at the planet Jupiter you can see some of its moons around it and this made Galileo wonder if and other scientists if that maybe the earth and the other planets orbited around the Sun like what he saw these moons orbiting around Jupiter <clears throat> made people start to question all right so <clears throat> measurements taken by Galileo and other scientists with telescopes allowed the creation of an accurate heliocentric model of the solar system that correctly explained and predicted the movements of the Sun, the Moon, the planets, and the stars. Okay, so Galileo and other scientists, especially the guy that invented this telescope, uh, Isaac Newton, they would observe this planets and with these telescopes and then they were able to create a heliocentric model and their model of the solar system correctly predicted when they would see the different planets and the moon and the stars. So only after that did people begin to accept that the sun was really at the center of the solar system. Oh, and by the way, when uh, Galileo first started proposing that the sun was at the center of the solar system, it was very controversial at the time. Uh, that People thought he was crazy. In fact, he was even jailed for a while because what he was saying go, went against the Bible, you know, that, that people just didn't believe <clears throat> that what he was saying could be possibly true. But we now know because of scientific observations that, that he is correct. All right, our sun, Earth's sun, is a star like other stars located outside our solar system. You go outside at night and you can see hundreds of thousands of stars. <clears throat> okay, they're all similar to our sun. A star is an extremely hot, dense mass of gases. As these gases undergo nuclear fusion, the star gives off visible light. So our, star, our sun is like a giant ball of gas that's undergoing nuclear fusion. That's what gives it its light and its heat. Our sun is medium sized compared to other stars, but it's still the most massive object in our solar system. This picture compares our sun, which is a medium-sized star, to some other stars that you can observe in the sky, Sirius, Pollux, and I don't even know how to say that one, Arc Arcturus, okay. Uh, ours is pretty small compared to some, but it's actually medium-sized because there are smaller stars than ours, our sun, okay. 
the sun, like I said, was the most massive thing in our in our solar system. 99% of the mass of our solar system is our sun. It has enough mass that its gravity, its gravitational pull, holds the planets and other objects in our solar system in orbit around it. Okay, when, when things travel around a star that's called an orbit, <clears throat> the sun also does rotate or spin on its axis. So it's spinning around while it's traveling through space. Okay, now let's talk about the planets. Our solar system is made up of eight planets. Yes, eight, not nine. We'll talk about Pluto in a little bit. Um, the four planets closest to the sun are the inner planets. That's Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Okay, what are the inner planets like? Well, they're mostly solid. They're made up of rock. They're rocky or terrestrial. When we say something is terrestrial planet or a terrestrial moon, that means it's made of rocks. Okay. Um, these inner planets are all have ma made up of minerals that are similar to those on Earth. Um, these planets are smaller in size compared to the, the outer planets. Okay, and actually, of the inner planets, Earth is the largest. Venus is the closest in size to Earth. And Mars is about a third the size of Earth, and then um, Mercury is even smaller than that. All right, the outer planets. Uh, the four planets that are farthest from the sun are called outer planets, and they include Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Okay, the characteristics of these planets, they're mostly made up of gas. They're not really solid, at least we're not sure. They may have a solid core, but they're mostly just gas. Their inner cores may contain solid matter that is surrounded by some liquids. Like I said, we were not quite sure what's in there, never been to one of these planets. They are larger, much, much, much larger in size. In fact, Earth on Jupiter right here, Earth would pretty much fit right inside this giant red spot on, on Jupiter. <clears throat> and they are colder, much colder than the inner planets because they're further away from the sun. Okay. Um, let's talk about how planets move. Okay. All planets both rotate and revolve. What the heck do those words mean? Okay. Rotating is spinning like a top okay rotation causes our day and night all the planets rotate at different speeds okay you see this arrow right here you see how the arrow is rotating as this planet goes around the Sun that means because the planet is rotating it's spinning okay these pictures also show rotation you see the little arrows show how the planets rotate on their imaginary axis Okay, so while these planets are orbiting around the sun, they are also rotating. Okay, the other movement that this planet is doing and all planets are doing is they are revolving. Revolving is a fancy word for orbiting. They are going around the sun. Okay, the inner planets revolve around the sun faster than the outer planets because the distance they have to travel in their orbits gets larger the further out you travel from the sun. Okay, so... And you also notice that this orbit or this um, revolution right here is not partic not exactly a circle. It's because all of the planets, even though it's close to a circle, are going around the sun in, in an oval-shaped orbit that's called an elliptical orbit. Okay, so our planet orbits or revolves around the sun in one year, 365 days. The further out you go, like Mars is the next planet out from Earth, its orbit or its re revolution takes over 600 days because it's further away from the Sun. And Jupiter and Saturn, they all take longer to go around the Sun because they're further away. And that's a revolution. <clears throat> all right. All right, let's talk about poor Pluto. It used to be the ninth planet. And Pluto does not meet part of the definition of what a planet is now. A planet is a celestial object that meets all three of these criteria. Number one, it orbits around the sun. Well, Pluto does that. <clears throat> Number two, it has a nearly spherical shape. It's shaped like a ball. It's, Pluto is like that because we've now visited Pluto with a robotic spacecraft last year. So we know that it is spherical in shape. And number three, though, 
it has a clearly it has cleared the neighborhood around it of smaller objects okay that means the gravity of the planet has either sucked in all of the smaller asteroids and things around it or it has pushed them out of the way Pluto has not done that it does not meet this number three criteria there are still things in Pluto's orbit um, that it has not cleared out so now we consider it to be a dwarf planet all right next we're talking about moons moons are planets I mean sorry planets are orbited by moons most of the planets Mercury and Venus do not have moons but all the other planets do including Pluto um, they are smaller than planets and are held in place by the gravitational pull of the planet that they orbit okay so <clears throat> The moon orbits around a planet, while the planet orbits around the sun. Jupiter has some of the largest moons. Um, the four largest moons of Jupiter are these right here. <clears throat> they're called the Galilean moons, and they're named Ganymede, Io, Callisto, and Europa. These moons are very important for, for many reasons. One, because their discovery, their discovery by Galileo, that's why they're called Galilean moons. Galileo discovered them with his telescope. Because of their discovery, we changed our belief from the geocentric model of the solar system to the heliocentric model. Okay, so that was very important. Another reason is because their physical properties are similar to Earth's. They're, they're made up of layers of rock. They're terrestrial. And another very interesting fact, um, this one, Europa, is covered by a frozen ocean so it's covered by ice made of water and because of this there are many people who think if there could be life on another celestial body in our solar system it could possibly be on on Europa we don't know because we've never sent a spacecraft there okay um, Io this moon is has active volcanoes on it so it's it's you know and the interior of Io may be similar to that of Earth. All right. Another celestial body in our solar system are asteroids. Okay, they're rocky objects. They orbit the sun. However, asteroids are too small to be called planets or even dwarf planets or even moons. They're big chunks of rock that are orbiting around. And I mean big like, you know, the size of, of large islands on Earth. So they're they're pretty big but they're not as big as a, as a moon. Most asteroids are located in the asteroid belt. It's a wide area between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Okay, in this picture, um, you have Mercury, Venus, and Earth, and Mars, and then the asteroid belt, and then there's the orbit of Jupiter. So most of the asteroids are here in the asteroid belt. Um, the asteroid belt separates the inner planets from the outer planets. Asteroids occasionally crash into Earth, other solar system objects, even Earth. That's what causes craters on the moons and other planets. Craters are where asteroids or other objects hit another a body. You see these little marks on these uh, asteroids here have even been hit by other smaller asteroids, and those are craters. Okay, asteroids. Next, we need to talk about meteoroids, meteors, and meteorites three names for the same object it just depends on where it is okay a meteoroid is another type of rocky object moving in space between the planets meteoroids are smaller than asteroids so they're chunks of rock but they're smaller than asteroids okay most meteoroids that enter Earth's atmosphere are about the size of a pebble so we're talking about really small rocks okay those are meteoroids Okay, when a meteoroid enters Earth's atmosphere, it's flying very fast through space. When it gets into the atmosphere, that speed produces friction with the molecules of gases in our atmosphere, and that friction produces heat as they speed through the air toward the ground. Okay, we see this heat in the sky as a glowing path like this picture right here. That's called a meteor. So this is a meteoroid that has entered our atmosphere. And because it's going really fast, it gets hot. It starts glowing red. And it, uh, we see that as a meteor. Okay, most meteors 
burn up in the atmosphere completely because they they get so hot that they just and, and they're so tiny that they just burn up. Okay, if a meteoroid that is streaking through the atmosphere as a meteor, if it's big enough to not burn up and hit the ground, the piece of the meteoroid that is left over when it hits the ground is called a meteorite. Okay. A meteorite, a piece of a meteoroid that has survived its passage through the atmosphere and strikes Earth's surface. Here's a picture of a meteorite. The reason why it looks so funny like this is, see how it looks like it's been melted? As it was streaking through the atmosphere, it got hot and part of it melted and started flowing away. <clears throat> and um, I actually have a meteorite that I found and I'll show it to the class. So this right here, uh, this animation shows what happens and when a meteoroid is called a meteorite, okay? Um, when it's in space up here, it's, and it'll start over again right here. When it's in space, it's called a meteoroid. And as it is entering our atmosphere, it gets hot and starts to melt and it forms this trail of vapor and gases. Now it's a meteor as it's going through the atmosphere, okay? And when, if you see one of these, it goes very fast. It's not slow like this. All right, so this is a meteor. And then if part of it survives and doesn't burn up, when it actually hits the Earth, then it is called a meteorite, okay? Comets. A comet is a small mass of dust and ice that orbits the sun, okay? Like planets. Comets have elliptical orbits, okay, like this oval shape, but um, the orbits of most comets are much longer, so they're big, thin ovals compared to planets, which are barely ovals at all, okay? So this means that comets can get quite close to the sun in some parts of their orbit. So they get real close to the sun, and then they go way off out into the, to the other outer parts of the solar system, and then eventually they come back in closer to the sun again. All right, so when comets are close to the sun, they're affected by solar radiation, you know, the heat from the sun and the solar wind, which is particles that, that come off of the sun. This gives comets a visible comma and tail, okay? Let's take a look at, at this. Um, this is an actual picture of a real comet right here, okay? So the icy, dusty part of the comet, the, the hard part, the solid part, is actually right down here in, in the coma. All right. The coma is the cloud of gas and dust around the comet. So when it gets close to the sun, it heats up. It starts kind of boiling and steaming, and it releases this, this gas and dust away from it. Okay. Uh, and then it forms a tail that stretches out behind it. And that's what you can see from Earth when a comet gets close to the sun if it's big enough. You can actually see this. You can go outside and see this in the sky. All right. Um, when it gets away from the sun, the, the, the coma and the tail goes away because it's not close enough to the sun to get heated up and to spew all these gases off. Okay. So comets actually have two tails. They have dust that's coming off in one direction and gas, which is coming off in another. And these are blown away from the coma by the solar wind or the particles that come away from the sun. All right. And that's our celestial objects.